Yes. Oh, wow. This has been a uh, lovely vacation. Uh oh, my towel is <laughs> uh, interesting choice of colors there. Um, yes. Uh, guys, uh, just uh, apologies. I was on a vacation actually, and then I totally forgot. Like, oh, Sunday, you know, of course, live stream. So, um, fortunately, uh, there is Wi Fi here on the cruise ship. This is a uh, KeyCat Cruises. I got a uh, discount coupon from someone I know. And uh, yeah, I'm just enjoying myself on this nice cruise and um, I'll do a live stream here. So let me just check out to see who's here first. Oh, Ahimong, hello. Hello, Ahimong, welcome. Um, let's see who else is here. Uh, Mikyok Oppa, hey, what's up? My uh, sheep, my goat member. <laughs> the towel of invisibility, yes. Uh, I, sh I wasn't supposed to show you that. This is actually a, uh, a government sponsored cruise and that was some classified material. So you might not see this live stream on my channel after it's finished. Let's see. Where did I go for the cruise? Secretive. Um, well, clearly I am somewhere out in the middle of the ocean, but I I'm not sure. I mean, I just got a coupon and they're like, hey, you want to go on a cruise? And I'm like, sure. Uh, I think, I guess we're going to Korea. Some kind of uniform, uh, some kind of unicorn, sorry. I always say that, like you're all fancy on a cruise. Yeah, you know, just every once in a while you gotta take a break, you know, take care of yourself. Do I see a fresh haircut? Yeah, I did get a haircut just a few days ago because uh, my hair started getting too long. I'll probably get another one, like within a month. It doesn't last more than a month anyway. Lynn Barch, Jeju, yeah. Oh, that'd be nice to take a cruise to Jeju. I didn't even, never, never even thought about it before. That'd be really cool. They've got to have cruise boats that go to Jeju. They've got to. Beefy Bidoof, ayo. Hey, Kimong, that's usually why you get a haircut. Thanks, thanks for letting me know. I wasn't sure why I, I had to get one every month. My mom told me when I was a kid that I should get haircuts and I was just doing that the whole time because she said so. I didn't realize that was the reason. I'm on a diet and I miss pop. I understand. I know how you feel. <laughs> yes, welcome everyone. Today we're going to be learning about um, two things. Well, actually two main forms, but several other forms. have ever, and this involves two big different forms that we're gonna talk about today. One of them we've already talked about in a previous live stream, so I'm not gonna go into as much detail on that one. We'll give a quick refresher, but it's going to be focusing more on the new forms that we have for saying have ever. And I wanted to talk about the prerequisites for today's lesson first. So in order to follow along with today's lesson, you need do I need to replace this pen? Again, seriously, like every week, it only lasts like one day, I swear. Um, you need to know how to do the yo form. You need to know how to do yo form conjugation. So you need to know how to take a verb like hada, bokta, poda, uh, you know, all these regular yo form verbs. And you need to know how to be able to use these in a sentence, how to transform them using the yo form, which is the most common conjugation in Korean. If you're not familiar with the yo form already, then today's lesson will be rather difficult to do because it uses the yo form for actually, what is this? This is an M. It uses the yo form for two parts of the same grammar form. So you'll have to know the yo form very well, or it's gonna be really hard making the yo form like within, within these examples, you really won't know how to do it. It's not as simple as just attaching something to the end of a verb. So first thing you need to know how to do is the yo form. The next thing that you need to know is, well, if you're, this is a bonus. If you're familiar with the poda form that we already learned in a previous live stream, when I taught you guys how to say to try, that will be a bonus for today's live stream because we're going to be using this form again today, as well as using this form to contrast with 
a different form. So if you're very, if you're already familiar with how to do like he pasoyo, he poda to try doing something, then you're going to be a little bit ahead of other people for this lesson. If not, we'll do a quick, brief overview of it. But I would really recommend getting familiar with this in order to master today's lesson because it's really essential. It's a part. It's really a part of it. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's the only requirements for today. So as long as those things seem good, then we're good to go. Before I start, though, I'm just gonna check the chat one more time. Anybody else eating they chum shim right now? Why you say they? It's supposed to be there, you know? English grammar, hello, Ahimank. Let's see. So according for time, I should be there by three, there by four. Okay, I think we should be good for time today. Because today's lesson actually is lots of example sentences, but it all fits on one page. I like when they all, I like when it fits on one page. That makes me happy. That means I don't have to rush. Ahimang, I'm having cauliflower rice and eggs. You know, you can have cauliflower pizza. You know, there is, there are recipes for making cauliflower dough pizza. And I've tried it before and it's disgusting, but you can kind of think you're eating pizza when you're on a diet. So in that sense, it's really cool and it tastes pretty good. See if there's anything else I'm missing. All right, so let's get started with the lesson. Um, before we go into the main form for today, I wanted to do a quick review of this form. So if you've already seen the live stream from last time, you don't need to pay attention to this too much. But for people who are not familiar with Poda form, I'm sorry, I'm not going into detail to it. I'm, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be going into detail into this form today. But I'll give you a brief overview that this form means to try as in to actually do something, not attempt, sorry, not like put forth effort, not attempt to do something and fail. Like I'm going to, well, I will try it, but I don't know if it will work. I'm going to try hard to learn Korean, not that kind of try. It's trying as in, I'm just going to do it. Okay. I'm just all fine. I will try it. I will do it. As in, I will do it and then I will pull da to see, see how it goes. So, so literally this form when attached to a verb means to actually just go and do something and then see how that went. So it's not used for saying you're going to try hard or you didn't like, oh, you didn't even try. It's not that kind of effort. It doesn't mean you're putting forth effort into doing anything. It just means you're actually doing it. You're just straight on just doing it. But in the sense that you're doing it to see how it goes, that's how it means to try. In that sense, like to try eating something means you're actually just eating it. You're not going to like, well, I'll try eating it. I'm going to try eating it, but I don't know if it'll work. <sighs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't eat it. I tried. It's not that kind of try. It's just, I'll try it. I'm going to eat it and see how it is. Okay. I tried it. Just see, trying to do something as in just doing it. So that's the most important thing you need to know about this form because I see a lot of people learn it and they think it just means to try and then they use it completely wrong because it does not mean to put forth effort into to trying to do something. It just means doing something. So if you want to say you go to Korea, normally you would say you, you could use kada to go. But if you want to say you went to Korea, you tried it out, like you went to Korea for the first time and you tried going to Korea, you can say ka pasoyo, literally kada and to go, and then poda in the past tense to see. So literally, I went and saw how it was. Or in English, we would just say I went to Korea. It doesn't always translate as to try. Uh, another example could be with eating. So mokda means to eat. So mogo eat. Pose. Oops. And we'll just do this. It's not really that common. Uh, I'll change it. Let's keep it simple. So eat it and see how it is. So try it. So you could say this to regular friend. Try it. Or if you're really close with them and they're younger. Try it. Try it. Literally here. Eat it and see how it is. Not 
put forth effort, make an effort to eat it. Not like that, just eat it and tell me how it is. So that's what this for means. And um, let's see, if you wanna learn more about this form though, because that's all I'm going into for today, then check out my previous live stream about how to say to try. There's also going to be a abridged version. I actually finished editing the video already, the abridged version, but it's not gonna be uploaded I think for a while. I'm not sure when it's gonna be uploaded, but it'll be uploaded sometime this summer. Uh, but check out the full version. You can learn about how to use that form exactly and how it's different from another form, as well as lots of examples on that. That one's a really thick lesson. So the, today's was just a really quick brief overview so that you know how to use today's form, but we're not gonna be focusing on just using this Poda form for today. What we are going to be doing is talking about this form. If you wanna ask someone, have you ever done something or something whatever before, or to say that I have, for example, gone to Korea before, this have ever before form is actually quite simple to do. And in order to do it, we're going to need that Poda form that we just learned, but you don't necessarily have to have to be a master of that Poda form in order to use this form. So all you do is you take a verb stem, sorry, actually, let's just do this. You take a verb stem that's conjugated. And by that, I mean you conjugate it to the yo form. So this would be, hada would become hey. So it's not always going to be plus a or all or et cetera. I'm just writing this up here as a quick reminder that what you're doing is you're conjugating the verb to the yo form, but without adding the yo. So some resources have a diff, each resource might have a different way that they refer to that sort of conjugation. I really don't care what you, whatever you wanna call it, but it's just the basic conjugation of any sort of verb. So hada becomes hey. Kada becomes just ka. Mokda to eat is mokko. Poda to see is pa. Um, let's see. Norda. Nora. Um, you know, just like that. You just conjugate it like that. So it might not always be a or o. Some of these are different depending on the verb stem. But you just get the basic conjugation first. Then you attach. Pon. Now, pon actually comes from poda. So what you're doing when you're making this verb stem and conjugating it to the yo form, but not attaching yo, and then attaching pon, you're actually recreating that poda form that we just learned. This is the exact same conjugation as when you say poda. When you take a verb conjugated and you attach poda, you're doing the exact same thing here again, except this poda is conjugated like pon. So it's not a different conjugation. If you can conjugate that poda form from before, you will be able to make this form. It's the exact same thing. However, you only do it in pon. Now what pon is, it comes from poda. So we take the verb stem of poda, remove the ta, and then we make it into the past tense adjective form. Now past tense adjective form, for example, would be something like, um, Kan for kada, which would mean went, and pun for, for puda would mean seen. So literally, this is now an adjective in the past tense. And what that means is something here, whatever noun comes of, whatever noun comes here, is being described by this verb that comes before it. So here, puda is to see. So something that was seen, or in our case with puda form for to try, something that was tried. So literally we're saying whatever comes after here will be something that we or I or you or whatever tried to do. So what is it that's going to come after here? I, I'm just sorry. I just wanted to first explain that this was past tense from Poda. So it literally is an adjective. So up until here, all we have is an adjective. And what has to come after is some sort of noun. The noun that comes after this is chok. Chok. So let me just check the chat, make sure I'm not losing you guys. I haven't, I didn't check the chat for like five minutes and I just keep talking. And then I learn, turn and look at the chat and everyone's like, what's going on, Billy? No, actually, I think you guys are doing okay. I just wanna make sure that you understand how this works. So yeah, 
So at any time that you make an adjective, and I also have a live stream about how to do this type of adjective with action verbs, it has to be followed by a noun. So this next word after an adjective must be a noun. Adjectives in Korean have to, if it's an adjective, be followed by a noun. You cannot end a sentence with an adjective. I know you guys won't do this anyway. I'm just adding some extra information to kind of make it to really help you understand exactly what this form means. Because if you know exactly what this form means, you'll be able to contrast it with the next, with the next form that we're going to be learning. So um, then we have chuck. Now chuck means a, an experience. Experience. This word is not this word does not mean like I have experience um, in software development or it was a very bad experience. It doesn't mean that sort of experience. It means something that happened. Simply as in the experience of having done something. That's all it means. It doesn't mean like, you know, if, you, if you're playing a role playing game and you, you don't earn talk in a role playing game when you kill monsters. It's not that kind of experience. It's not the literal word for experience. It's a helping word that's used to mean an experience. Literally, it means an experience though. Like a time that something happened, an experience of something having happened. That event happened. So literally what we're saying is an experience of having tried or experience of tried doing something. So if we were to just take our previous example we had with to eat, 먹어 보다, right? To try eating. So when we said 먹어봐요, like that, if you were to say 먹어, the literal meaning of this phrase, we haven't finished this form yet, the literal meaning of that phrase would be an experience of trying, so past tense, tried, the experience of having tried eating. So the experience of having tried eating something or whatever it is that we're talking about. So that's what we've got so far. Then after that, they typically follow it with the subject marker. So this is optional. I'll just put it here in parentheses. We're going to be using this as a subject, so that means there has to be some sort of verb. So anytime you have a subject marker, it means there's going to be some verb that we're talking about. That's what the subject marker does. It just marks, this is the subject, this noun, whatever comes before it, this noun, is the subject of a verb that's going to come in the sentence. So, 먹어본 적 이, and then you would use the verb 있다, or, I'll write it over here, 없다. Now, ita means, of course, to exist. And opta is the opposite, means not exist. So what you're literally saying, if you were to go back and use our example with bogo poda, to try eating something, what you're saying is bogo pun chok. The experience of having eaten something, the experience of having tried eating something exists or does not exist. That's the literal meaning. A little bit more natural, but still quite literal would be something like, I have, remember, ita also can be used to mean I have in the natural sense, though literally it means to exist. So I have the experience of having tried eating. That's what we get. So if you were to use the form, 먹어, 본, 적, 이, 있다, you know, you'd conjugate this, of course, then you would mean, I have tried eating something before. I've tried it before. So that's what we've got. This is the whole thing broken down exactly what it means. Because if you see it broken down, it's not so confusing. But if you just learn verb stem plus a, o, et cetera, or, you know, that form, and then you attach bon and then chuck e, eat that, it's like, what am I doing? You're just memorizing some random long grammar form and just spitting it back out. But then in the future, if you were to see something else here or something else here, then you'd be like, what's going on? I don't understand. That's a different grammar form when really all it is is this exact meaning here sometimes switched a bit around. So we'll talk about that. So pay attention to exactly what this means because it's important that you know exactly what this means. That way, when we learn the next form, you won't be confused. You'll say, oh, duh, I see, that's easy. But if you don't, if you just memorize this as is, you're going to have problems when you try to learn variations of this form. Okay, are we good? Yes, I think we're good. Let me just check the chat for a moment and check our time. Yes, yeah, someone, someone mentioned, isn't kyungham experience? That's right. There's actually a few different words for experience. Kyungham would be a regular word for experience. 
Uh, they have a different word if you're talking about a personal experience. You could say tehom or even experience for work. They would have different words for that, what type of experience. But the regular word for experience is kyung hum. This is well, pronounced just as kyung um, kyung um. This is the regular word for an experience of like having done something. This is the regular word. You can say kyung um yi like I have an experience or I, I had that kind of experience. You know, that's the regular way that you would say it. But this chok here is more of a helping noun, as in it doesn't come by itself in a sentence. It's not like the literal word you'd use for that, but that's what it literally means. So it would only appear when it's being described by adjectives, like some specific times. And there's actually other use of another use of chok that we'll learn uh, for advanced learners at the end of this lesson. But for now, that's fine to just learn it as it means an experience, but don't use it to mean experience. Just I'm telling you that's what this word means, is an experience. It can also literally mean time, but as in like a time or a happening, an experience. Okay. And what that form translates as is, have ever done something before. And this before is optional. You don't have to add the word before. Like if you wanna say, I have tried it before, or I have tried it, it's the pretty much the exact same meaning in English. Adding before in English just emphasizes that it's in the past. But even if you don't add before, it means in the past anyway. So whether you want to use it or not, feel free to add or not add the word before when you translate it into English. I think a lot of the time before sounds natural, but it's up to you. So let's check here. He doesn't really do advanced things currently. Um, no, well, last lesson I did some advanced stuff at the end. I always, if I do anything advanced, it will always come toward the end of the lesson. I, I try to organize my lessons so that the beginning is beginner and low intermediate. And then if I have stuff that's high intermediate and advanced, I put those toward the end. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. First, let's just do, actually, I want you guys to do this. Hada, the simplest verb in Korean, to do. How would you say, I have done it before? So all you need to do is take this verb, hada, and give me a sentence. I have done it before. We're not saying what it is, it's just to do, just I did whatever, it. So make me a sentence using hada. And I'm gonna write it up on the board, but I want you guys to try it in the chat. Let's cover here. Okay, so don't look at this if you're trying to write it for yourself. Let's see what you guys, if you got it. Hey, pasoyo. Okay, no, we're gonna be talking about that. LS Woods RN. We're gonna be talking about that. It's not. Hey, pasoyo. Hey, bonjogi soyo. Unicorn mixer, nice. Hey, bonjogi soyo, nice. Hey, bonjogi soyo, nice. Hey, bonjogi soyo. Okay. <laughs> Why is the moderator? They're not putting me down, they're just joking. Kimbaber. Hey, kimbap? You did kimbap? What did you do to the kimbap? Kiffany kimbap. <laughs> you could try to say made kimbap with mandirda to make. Is ita always in the present? Throw away if you want it to be. See, um, that's actually a good question. Let's go into that. I mean, it's a good thing you brought up. Um, no. So in Korean, we just talked about how this literally means to have the experience of having tried doing something, you know, to have, it exists. Well, what if you want to say, I had done something before? Like, you know, not have done some, I have been to Korea, but I had been to Korea. Like, if you really wanted to, I guess you could change this to past tense as well. But I can't think of an example right now where you would change this to a different tense. Um, I guess if you said like, I used to be, many people used to like me, like, I had the experience of many people liking me before, but not anymore. I guess maybe something like that, you could use it in the past tense, but I can't think of an example right now when you use it in the past tense. So just keep it in the present tense, unless you can think of something that would make sense. I can't think of anything that would make sense right now. At least not that would be natural. Um, but this ending doesn't just have to be isoyo. You know, you can use it in any sort of tense. I mean, any sort of conjugation, you can say, uh, if you're asking a question, 
있으세요. You know, sometimes people might say 있나요. If you're asking a question and other people, uh, 있어. If you're talking with your friend, you know, it's whatever conjugation you want at the end, just like in regular Korean. So yes, 해본 적이 있어요. Literally, the experience exists of having tried to do whatever this do is. You know, uh, maybe it's have you ever tried. Learning Korean before. You would use peuda for to learn. So peuwo, pon, jog, i, opsoya. Let's say opsoya. So you can say hangugo, hangugo er, Korean peuwo pon, trying to learn. So having tried to learn. Experience I don't have, so I don't have the experience of having tried to learn Korean, or more naturally in English we would just say I have never tried learning Korean before. There we go, pretty simple. There's not too much to this form. Once you've learned exactly what it means, there's not really much to worry about this form. So let me just give you a bunch more examples. Um, how would we say? Actually, I want you guys to write this. How would I say I haven't tried? Eating. I haven't tried kimchi before, so we're gonna need kimchi, mokta to eat. And that's it. So I have never tried kimchi before. Make this sentence because it could be a real sentence. I know some people have never tried kimchi before, even though you can speak. Maybe you're at an intermediate level of Korean, but you've never tried kimchi before. It's possible. Some people, you know, don't live next to a Korean market. So how would you say I've never tried eating kimchi before, or I've never tried kimchi before? I swear, you guys are so fast. And Mary Liz, you're like, you type so fast, I'm sure. Kimchi or bobo bonjo gyo soyo. Nice. Ellis Woods RN. Nice. So bobo bonjo gyo soyo. Kimchi or bobo bonjo gyo soyo. Kimchi or bobo bonjo gyo soyo. Bobo bonjo gyo soyo. Yep, that's nice too, Leticia. Kimchi or bobo bonjo gyo soyo. 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 Oh, Tipe Bang Tan, you have. Okay, that's fine too. Bobo bonjo gyo soyo. Uh, you wrote a uh, Tessa S. You, you have a typo on opsoyo. You wrote osoyo, but the sentence is correct. It's just a typo. Bogonjok i opsoyo. I haven't eaten it before. Adorable 10. Yes, you do put a space there. There is a space between the verb, uh, but it depends on the verb. Some verbs will attach the poda directly to it, but if you're wondering just a quick answer, put a space. It, it'll be easier. Um, but yeah, there are some verbs where they typically add the space. I mean, they typically don't add the space. It's more common not to, but for simplicity's sake, just go ahead and add it. So yes, if you want to say I've never had kimchi before, you say kimchi, er, mokda first, which is to eat kimchi. So kimchi er bogo, bon, chok. Think of this again as what it literally means: the experience of having tried eating kimchi, and then what about it? What do you want to say about that experience having tried eating kimchi? Well, it doesn't exist. Opsoyo. So I have. If you want, you can even add I. Tonin. That's optional. Kimchi er bogobon togi opsoyo. I have never tried kimchi before. Or literally, I do not have the experience of having tried eating kimchi before. And that before I just added in it doesn't really exist. There is no. You don't want to say tone <laughs> before in Korean. When you're trying to say the meaning of before, that means literally just earlier. This would mean like I never tried eating kimchi before earlier. It makes no sense. So yeah, don't try to add in the meaning of before. It's just in there in the translation, but it doesn't actually need to be in Korean. Let's see. Uh, how are we doing? We're actually doing really good. We got lots of time. I can go through all of these example sentences. Okay, here's another one. Have you ever been? To Korea, Hangu. How would I say this? Write down what you think. Have you ever been to Korea? So we're asking a question to someone. Have you ever been to Korea? What and been? Been in English we say been, but in Korean it's you know to go. It's the past tense of go. Well, it's the past participle of go or whatever they call that, right? In past p p p. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's like he went. Normally, it's went if it's regular past tense. But like I have been 
To is what they say for, you know, to go. So you're going to need to go. So have you ever been to Korea before? How would I say that? I've got lots of time for this lesson, so I'm going to give you guys lots of examples. Let's see who's first. Tiffany K-pop might have been first today. Yeah, uh, 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 Tiffany K-pop, you didn't add a question mark. Fail. Other than that, your sentence is, you're the fastest. But right after you throw away, got it right. 한국에 가본 적 있어요? 한국으로 가본 적 있으세요? Dr. Nutria, okay. 한국에 가본 적 있어요? 한국에 가본 적 있, 가본 적 있나요? Yep, and Mary Liz, that's fine too. 한국, uh, Ellis Woods RN, you want to have 한국 A or something like that, some sort of to, toward. 본 적이 있어요? 한국에 가본 적이 있습니까? Okay, 한국에 가봤어요? Uh, Yan Park, we're not doing that form right now. We'll talk about how this form is different than that form. 한국에 가본 적 있어요? 한국에 가본 적 있으세요? Okay. 한국에 가봤나? Yep, we're not doing that form right now. 한국에 가본 적 있어요? Yep. 한국에 가본 적 있으세요? 있으세요? 있어요? 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 에이 희망, don't dangle your participles. Yes. Let's see, good question. 한국에 가본 적 있습니까? Abby, uh, Abby, we're going to talk about how that form is different, but that's not the form we're doing right now. That's a different form, actually. Slightly. It has a different meaning. 가본 적 있어요? Oh, you wrote 가본 적 for 니파 아이이. You should have it. 적이. 한국에 가본 적이 있어요? Okay. Yeah, you guys have got it. Okay. So, have you ever been to Korea before? And now, of course, now you know how to say this with Korea. If you want, you can ask a Korean friend, have you, have you ever been to America before? If you want. 미국. But let's just do Korea. 한국에 가다 would be to go. So, 가본 적이 있어요? Or whatever, however you want to ask it. 있습니까? 있어요? You don't need to say 있으세요. Um, 있으세요 is typically has a slightly different usage. It's used commonly by people who just think it makes your sentence honorific, but it's not quite. There's a, there are specific cases when you can use 있으세요. Um, I cover them in my book, but I'm not going to be doing a separate lesson on honorifics for today. But I would just keep it to 있어요 or 있습니까 if you want to be extra formal but not going with 있으세요 for every, every time you want to change 있다 into honorific. So, 한국에 가본 적이 있어요? Have you ever been to Korea before? Literally, do you have 있어요? Do you have or is there an experience? Have you, do you have the experience of having tried going to Korea? Have you ever been to Korea before? And then someone could reply. How would someone reply to this if they have or haven't? So if you have, you can say 네. Then what do you think you might say? You can say, well, I'll just tell you. <laughs> 있어요. 있어요. So literally, or, you know, 아니요. 없어요. Or just 있어요, 없어요, or 아니요, or just 네. You don't have to say 네, 있어요, every single time. You say 네, whatever. But 네, 있어요, yes? I have, because they just ask you, do you have the experience of having been to Korea? Well, yes, I do have, not I did, or yes, not just yes, but yes. If you want to say I have, you say 있어요. Literally, yes, I do have that experience. 네, 있어요. Or no, I don't have it. 아니요, 없어요. So here's how you would respond to a question if someone's asking you if you have or haven't been somewhere before, which is another thing that learners um, might have trouble with because this is the literal meaning of it. So they might think that they should say something like, yes, I, I do. 네, 합니다, or 해요. Sometimes I heard that. Or 이에요, you know, it is. Or something like that, which is wrong. You want to reply with, you do have it or you don't have it. Okay, next, next example. Um, have you seen this movie before? So let's do this movie. This one I'm going to do with this one I'm going to do first because this is a little bit different than what you might expect. So, e yongha means this movie. Yongha meaning movie. There. Boda is to see a movie. So, literally this is just a this is not a sentence. This is just a verb, boda to see. And this movie. So, literally this means oops, movie. Movie. <laughs> Some fancy <laughs> fancy word for movie. Okay. Uh, to see this movie is 이 영화를 보다. So we need to work with this. So we want to say like, you know, I want to see this movie or I did see that movie or whatever like that. 
Here, we're going to say, I have never, or I have not ever seen this movie before. So, how would we do this one? What do you think would be this one? Pulda, how would we deal with this? Because pulda to see is the same thing as our other form, pulda, which makes pon, right? Remember for pon jok? So, this is from pulda. So now if we want to use poda here as the thing that we're doing, how do we do this? Well, you don't need to guess. If you know, you know. If you don't know, I'm just going to tell you. But this is why it helps to know that pon comes from poda originally. Because you wouldn't want to say pa pon. C, 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 literally. The experience of having I mean, well, the, you might think, oh, the experience of having tried seeing, but actually it sounds to Koreans more like seen see a movie. It sounds a bit repetitive. So in the case of the verb that you're doing being poda as well, you don't need to say anything. You don't need any verb. You just say yonghwarer pon, literally past tense see. Chogi, and you can say isoyo or opsoyo, whatever you want to say. Isoyo, opsoyo, I have or I haven't. And now it literally just means I have or I haven't, there is or there isn't, the experience of having seen the movie. That's why it's important to know that this pon comes from poda. Because if you don't know that, you're just going to have to think, well, I guess I don't use poda here with poda because it's, uh, they told me in my book. But no, you know exactly why now. It already means to see, literally. So there's no, even though it's being used to mean the grammar form of to try, it would sound repetitive to use it twice. So in that case, you don't need to say, I have seen, I have had the experience of having seen, seen the movie. It's just say, just say, I saw it. I have the experience of past tense, see. So the experience of having seen or saw the movie. Pretty cool, huh? But that's the only example when you don't need to use the verb is if it's actually pulled up. Okay, let me check the chat for a moment. I am not a Swede. I meant also it's cool you live in Sweden. Is there any, are there any Swedes in here? I like Swedes. Let's see, you want to punjogi soyo? Okay. I see some of, some of you guys were writing it anyway. A uh, few, few, few wrong answers though I can see above, but it's okay because I covered it. So I didn't expect you guys to already know that because that's something where you, you can't really guess it unless you already know exactly the meaning of the original form. So it's like you either know it or you don't. Stephanie Stanfield, we will get to that. Don't worry, that's in the lesson today. I like Swedes. I like Swedish people. Swedes, that's what you call Swedish people, right? I, I guess so, right? Is that is that like, that's not derogatory, is it? Conan, oh, hey, Swede here, what's up? <laughs> I like Germans. I like everyone. I like every people. I mean, every, every country's people that I know of. I don't know every country, though. But every country's people that I know of, they're, they're usually, usually pretty nice. I've never been. Donations are slow today. Oh, you're right. I didn't even notice. There's been no donations today. I was just really uh, absorbed in the lesson. So getting that. Lynn, Lynn Barch. Nice. Lynn Barch. We'll put you up here. You'll be the first one up here. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, I got all this, all this marker dust on my fingers. I got to clean this board again. I mean, just the, the bottom of the board. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. I'm from Swede, too. All these Swedes suddenly just coming out of the cracks. They're like, did someone say Swedes? Did someone say Billy likes Swedes? Like, coming out from the behind the floorboards, <laughs> looking around. Like, five people are saying they're from Sweden now, suddenly. Whereas 52 Bunker, yeah, 52 Bunker would always would always drop in. It's okay, it's okay. I, I appreciate it. I do these, I'll do these streams regardless of donations or not. I'm part Chilean. I wasn't born there. Nice. Yeah, PewDiePie is a Swede. That's right. Everyone go uh, 
subscribe to PewDiePie, <laughs> help him win the war against T-Series. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do the next part. Um, have you ever met Charsu before? How would I say this? Have you ever met Charsu before? I'm really happy because I get to do all these example sentences and make you guys do it. Whereas normally I don't have time to do these example sentences because I have so much stuff to cover. But today I have lots of example sentences and only a few major topics. So I'm like, I'm going to do them all. I mean, we're going to do all these sentences, I hope. So have you ever met Charsu before? So Charsu, Charsu, and to meet is just mannada. So how would you ask someone, have you ever met Charsu before? Actually, let's do Charsu Shi to be polite. But if you don't add Shi, it's okay. You know, Charsu is kind of a jerk. Anyway, we don't need to be, we don't need to be uh, <laughs> respect, respectful to Charsu today. <laughs> let's see here. Charsu ru manna bon jogi soyo. Emeril is nice. Charsu ru manna bon jogi nayo. Charsu Shi manna bon jogi isoyo. Yep, unicorn mixer. Charsu ru manna bon jogi soyo. Nice, nice. Charsu manna, oh. Me, my, me, you have a you have a typo in the, for to meet. Ellis Woods, Charsu Shi Ga, no, char, Ellis Woods RN, Charsu Shi Ga would mean Charsu met someone before or didn't, but you're, you need to use the object marker. Since we are meeting Charsu, he is not the one meeting. Char, oh, Yan Park, you have a typo for Charsu's name, but the rest of it's fine. Just typo for his name. Charsu Shi, Banda Bonjok, so let Ellis with LOL. Yeah, yeah the, the letter, that's right. Unicorn makes it. Charsu Cedar, yep. Tessa S, you, you, you spelled Charsu's name uh, completely differently, but the rest of your sentence is perfect. Tessa S, you wrote Chusu. I'm not sure who Chusu is, but the rest of the grammar is perfect, so I'll just assume it's a typo. Charsu Cedar, manna bonjogi naya. Charsu Cedar, manna bonjogi. Okay, you guys have got it. Uh, Abby, it's uh, not er, but it's ler. Sorry. After she. So she, there. Charsu Shider. Manna. Bon. Chogi. Isoyo. So Charsu Shider. Manna bon Chogi. Isoyo. Have you ever met Charsu before? Or literally, do you have the experience of having tried meeting Charsu before? So this pun. As we just learned with movie, literally means to, to see. Well, here it means to try doing something. Just kind of like, kind of remember that because the next part we're going to do, not the next sentence, but the next section, um, is going to talk about that again. We're going to learn another way to use this. Okay, the next sentence, and then we're going to go on to something else. Um, I've never flown in an airplane before. How would I say this? So airplane is piengi. To fly in an airplane, you say piengir tada. Literally, tada means to ride something, as in to like ride a vehicle, some sort of mode of transportation. And here it's airplane. So how would you say I've never flown in an airplane before? Well, literally, they would just say I've never ridden, I've never tada in an airplane before. But how would you say that? Let's see who's the fastest. Have I ever done a fan meeting? I did a fan meeting once, but not for my uh, YouTube channel. I mean, not through my YouTube channel. I did it through another website. But the problem is the people who watch my channel live in all over different places of the world. And I'm not famous enough to just have a fan meeting anywhere I want and expect a lot of people to come. So it would have to be in here in LA or somewhere in Korea, maybe Seoul, Korea. So I don't know. If enough people want to come to a fan meeting in Seoul, Korea this summer, it's possibility I could do one. Oh, this cup. No, 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 it's a, it's a gravity cup. It's a gravity cup. This lid actually just floats one inch above the rest of the cup. It's pretty cool. Uh, it uses some special technology. It's really a cool cup. It's one of the other things I got here at this um, government-sponsored cruise. Pengiter tabun fantima. You wrote tan. It should be ta, for because it's just the yo form without the yo. Pengiter tabun jogi opseyo. Pengiter tabun jogi opseyo. Okay, you guys have most of you. I think you guys have got it. So I don't want to spend too much time 
bugging you guys about how to do this conjugation because I think you guys have got the conjugation. So ta da would just become ta, normally ta yo, like yes, I do write it with the yo form. So we don't need the yo, we just need the basic conjugation, conjugation here. So ta hon ta. The experience of having tried riding in an airplane, and then e opsoya. So I have never ridden in an airplane before. 저는 비행기를 타본 적이 없어요. Now let's talk about something different. Bum bum bum. Okay, what did I just do here? What did I just do? What is this, Billy? You can't just do that. You can't just do that to me, Billy. I thought we were friends. I thought we were friends, Billy. What is this? Does anyone have an idea of why I can do this? Well, take a guess. Think about it for yourself. Why can I just do this? I thought it was supposed to be chogi, right? Chogi, chogi, you know, subject marker, chogi. Well, you know what? I don't feel like it. I'm gonna put chogun, okay? There's nothing you guys can do about it. It's my stream. Chogun. Piengiru tabon chogun, opsoyo. What does this mean? What would this mean? Let's see if you guys have any idea. Making it the topic of the sentence now. That's right. Noah Deeps. Contrasting. Ibrahim. Yes, that's right. Contrasting. Emphasis. Yep. Sure. Queen Vanderbilt, as for a plane, well, I've never been on one. Um, quite not that emphasis. I mean, it's not that exact emphasis that you wrote, but yes, it does have a feeling of like that, like breaking up the sentence. So I'm not going to be going over a review of topic markers and subject markers today. I have a separate live stream and an abridged version and a Learn Korean episode and a Korean FAQ episode all about those. So I have like four or five videos about topic markers and subject markers, but the subject marker, sorry, the topic marker says, let's talk about this now. Like you have your whole, everyone's holding up a sign together who's talking and whatever you put before a topic marker covers what's on the sign. So you're saying kind of like, hey, let's talk about this now. So if you're saying, like, let's talk about this part. Let's talk about this experience. So a good way you can translate this topic marker is as for, you know, or like, let's talk about this now. So let's just say as for. So if we think of this meaning as as for, what we get is as for an experience about having tried riding an airplane, well, I don't have one, but I do have an experience of doing something else. So this can show contrast for something. Maybe you want to say, 비행기를 타본 적은 없지만, but, you know, 지만, this ending for but, so 없지만, although I don't have the experience, as for the experience, here, experience, of having tried riding in an airplane, well, I don't have that, but I do have the experience of riding in a boat. Something, you could do something like that for the contrast if you want. You don't have to have it contrasted with something else, but it does have that feeling of well, like I haven't been in an airplane before. I haven't been, I haven't ridden, I haven't flown. You know, I guess whatever verb you want to translate tada as, ridden or been in or flown. So I haven't flown an airplane before, but I ha but my dad has an airplane or, you know, I don't know, whatever else you want to say, you have some sort of contrast now by adding in this topic marker. So you're saying like, well, as for this experience, you know, I do or I don't or whatever you want to say it doesn't change the meaning extremely. Like it's not going to make it a different meaning completely. You can say, 타본 적이 없어요. Or 타본 적이 없지만, you know, I don't have the experience of having ridden in a, flown in an airplane, but you know, I do own an airplane or I do ride like boats. You can still say that with the subject marker, but adding un just adds the sort of contrast now that, hey, let's talk about this now. Like, hey, whatever we were talking about before, now let's talk about the experience of having been in an airplane. Well, I don't have that, but you know, I'm not afraid of airplanes or whatever you want to say that's talking about this experience. So you can do contrast, uh, comparisons, 
anything you want. The topic marker has a lot of uses and I really recommend checking out my live stream where I explain exactly the feeling of the topic marker and the subject marker. This subject marker, all it does is says that this noun that comes right before it is going to be the subject, that's why it's called subject marker, of some verb. So it just says chalk. Oh, this chalk is going to do something. Well, what's it going to do? It's going to not exist. Oh, soil. It just says this chalk is going to do something. It's not going to exist. But if you say chalk un, you say, hey, okay, chalk, now we're going to be talking about this. Well, it doesn't exist. So that can just be a different feeling to the sentence. But as far as like literal meaning, it does not change the literal meaning of the sentence at all. It's the exact same literal meaning, whether you say un, chalk un, or e, chalk e. So let me give you another example. You see, you'll start to see why more, why it's important to really understand the literal meaning of this form so that when you see other words that change it around, you'll say, you'll be able to understand what those could do to the sentence. So let's do one more with that though. Um, Yonggook. Yonggook means England. Ajik means yet in a negative sentence or still in a positive sentence. So like, I still like him or I don't like him yet. You know, whatever, whatever you want to translate to. Oh, I got a donation. Check that out. Whoa, tater tot. Tater tot with the huge $10 donation. Oh, and I didn't do a dab previously for uh, Lynn Barge either. Lynn, Lynn, do you want a dab as well? Hold on, let me do this tater tot, give a gigantic donation. $10 donation. Oops, I wrote tater tour. Let's see if Lynn wants a dab for that also. Okay, date tuition fee. Yeah, I like the tuition fee. <laughs> Let's see. Mine were $122 a pop for back in where, which concert. Okay, okay, let me do a dab here. It's gonna be a dab on the boat. I mean, a dab on the boat. Sweet, awesome. I was trying to, trying to like, you know, mess up the volume of the speakers with that, you know? I can't, I can't do that with my mouth. Lynn, oh, maybe, maybe she's uh, not at the computer. Okay, I'll do a small dab for Lynn though, just in case. Thanks both of you guys. Lynn for five, Tater Tot for 10. Awesome. Okay, so we've got this sentence. Ajik, so still or yet. Yongguge, so to England. Ka bun, jogun, opsoyo. So as for, let's just think of this as as for. As for having been to, or as for the experience of having been to England. As for whether I've been to England or not, well, I haven't. Well, I haven't been to England yet. Um, so how about, or as for, going to England? Well, I haven't. That's all it means. It just adds that feeling of you're now setting this up as the next thing that you're gonna talk about. Like if you say, well, you know, as for, or when it comes to whether I've been to England or not, well, I haven't. But, you know, you can say whatever else you want after that, but it just breaks up the sentence like that. So it leaves, um, it, it allows you to contrast the sentence with another sentence or with another concept or whatever else you want to do because it kind of breaks it up like that. So like, as for having been to Europe yet, well, I haven't, or you know, I haven't yet, however you want to translate that. That's all that it means. So it's the exact same meaning, literally, as whether you said chalk e. So if you were to say, it also exactly means the same thing. I haven't been to England before. Chalk gun. Chagun would also mean I haven't been to England before. It's just that slightly different feeling, that different nuance that you get by switching the particle. But I'm not done yet. Let's check here for a second. Okay. What am I gonna do next? So we're not gonna do chalk e, we're not gonna do chalk un. I'm gonna do something different. 
Uh oh. What's this? What is this, Billy? What is this? Chakdo? What? I thought we were just done. I thought you just said that we're not going to do anything else. I mean, I thought you just said that it's the exact same meaning. But this is clearly going to be something different because it has do, right? Yeah. Using do, however, does give this sentence a different meaning. But the form is the exact same literal meaning. And if you know the meaning of this chalk, I told you as an experience, you might be able to guess what this mean, what this sentence means. Um, to make things simpler, because I want you, I want you guys to write what this you think this sentence means. But to make things simpler, I'm gonna actually remove ajik at the beginning. I just don't want you to worry about this for right now. But what would this sentence mean? Yongguge kabon jok do opsoyo. What would the sentence mean? Because you know, to is just the regular particle to. It means also or and or even. So what do you think this would mean? Give me your guesses and I'll see who's right. I haven't been to England either. I haven't even. Yep, Tiffany K-pop. I haven't even. Tiffany K-pop got it first. Oh wait, no, someone else got it before that. Oh, looks like a chocolate got it first. I haven't even. <laughs> <laughs> or throwaway, wait, even maybe before, throwaway, even though I have never been to England yet. Um, it's not even though. I think Chocolate, Chocolate got this one right. I haven't even. That's the first person to get it right. I haven't done this too. Cat, Katan, yes, you got that right as well. Or Katan. I also haven't gone to English. That would probably be different. I haven't been to England either. So, yes, I, you, can probably think of, you can probably think of this as several different ways in English as you want, but the literal meaning is even the experience of having been or having tried going to England doesn't exist. So, I haven't even been to England before. I haven't been even to England. You know, like however you want to translate, it's going to have that sort of even or also or to meaning in it. So. I haven't even been, specifically what you haven't even done is been. You haven't even been. You don't even have the experience of having gone to England before. So that's all it means. So if you wanted to switch this up, you could even say something like, isoyo. This would mean, yongguye kabonjok do isoyo would mean like, I have even, I even have, the experience of having been to England. You know, I've even been to England before. <laughs> and you could say something like that if you want. Um, you, so you probably more often use to with a negative or else it could sound kind of like you're bragging, right? I have even been to England before, you know, but it's okay. Grammatically, you're still fine. And you might, you might have a situation where you want to say something like this, Maybe not with this specific verb, not going to England, but something else, you know. Uh, maybe someone says like, oh, do you know, um, have you learned the Korean alphabet before? You know, have you learned Hangul before? And you want to say, yes, I have even learned how to speak Korean dialects. Then you can choke do isoyo. You can use something, say something like that. And it won't sound like you're bragging if you do it in that situation. It's just you're telling them like, no, not only do I know the alphabet, but I've even... I even have the experience of having learned Korean dialects or what else you want to, whatever you want to say. Speaking of which, I made, a, I made an episode about Busan dialect. I'm really excited to upload it. It's already finished. But this will be uploaded, uh, I think, the first weekend of April. So it's coming up really soon. It's my personal favorite video. Uh, let's see, what, anything else? Okay. Oh, yeah. And then I wanted to make another note. Um, for this, I just want to know a yes or a no. Can I ever use this? Or, opsoyo. Can I ever use chogge, isoyo, or opsoyo? I just want a yes or a no from you guys. I just want to check, check something. I want to see if anyone says, okay, okay, good, good. All right. If you were thinking, okay, everyone here in the chat is saying no, and you're all correct. What if I was like, you're wrong. Ha. No, I was just kidding. I wouldn't want to confuse you that much. Yes. But if, if you're thinking yes, but you didn't want to write yes because you saw everyone else was writing no, I just want to give a quick, quick, 
quick explanation that itta and opta, so this is for beginners, itta and opta are what's called intransitive verbs. You don't need to learn that. They literally mean exist and not exist. You cannot have an object marker whenever the verb is not doing something. Like you would say normally, I eat cheese. Then you could use mogoyo. You know, cheese eat. How in like in that sense. But exist, this just means exist. This does not literally mean have. So this verb or this verb can never, ever use the object marker uh, or there. It's completely wrong. So never, under no situation, should you ever put the object marker before ita or opta. But I'm, I'm mentioning this though because it's such a common mistake for beginners who are learning Korean. And if that's you, if you're thinking, oh, I think I, sh I think I could, like you know, I want to say like I have an, I have a bike. I, I should use this, right? Because this means to have. No, this does not mean to have. Literally, it's used to mean to have, but it literally only means to exist. So. No, you cannot ever say chok er isoy. You can say chok e. You can say chok do. You can say chok un. Uh, you can even say other variations of that, but you cannot use the object marker. But I've seen it used a lot. So, like in this way. So I wanted to make sure I clarified that. Yes, dude. Okay, I gotta show you guys. We have done every sentence so far down to here. We are on like the last third. We've gone through two thirds of this lesson already. And we're only 50, we're only less than one hour into the lesson. This is great. I'm hoping we can finish like 10, 20 minutes early. No, maybe. <laughs> That's right. And uh, you can also think of them as a descriptive verb. However, Ibrahim, Rafik, uh, they're, they can also be, the ita can also be used as an action verb, believe it or not. But uh, that's a different, that would be for a different lesson. Tokman. Yeah, you could, Tiffany, if you, if you can think of an example sentence where you'd want to say, I only have the experience of having tried doing something. Um, I can't think of how you would only have the one experience of having done something, but if you can think of an example that sounds natural, then yeah, you can go ahead and say it and I'll tell you if it sounds okay or not. With chocolate, raspberry, tort, coffee. Okay, I don't know what that is. Are you on a boat? Yes, I'm on a boat. Can we say piengiru tanen go? Nope, you cannot. <clears throat> because you cannot use the nominalization form with hada. You're saying riding an airplane, doing riding an airplane. I never tried it. So Tiffany K. Pot, that would be really awkward to use the nominal nominalization form tanen go or anything nun go with hei boda. It's never used like that. It's Poda is just used directly after the verb stem, like the yo form, the basic conjugation, but not after another noun. <clears throat> Could put some complex and long sentences, but I can't hold a conversation. Uh, oh, Ibrahim Rafiq, check out my video, How to Find Your Korean Level, where I answer that. It's in, it's in the Korean FAQ series. Okay, so let's get back to the lesson. I could probably just talk to you guys all day in the chat, but uh, no, must move forward. So the next obvious question is that people have is, what's the difference between this bon jok, you know, ita? I'll just write the bon jok form, and the the regular pulda form, right? What's the difference? Why do they call it? No, I can't think of a Seinfeld joke for that. Okay, so what would be the difference between saying something like this? I want you guys to think about this. Someone's at my door, but I'm not going to get it. Hey, bon jogi isoyo and hey, pasoyo. What would be the difference between A and B? What do you guys think? I, I'll, I'll tell you guys, because this is actually part of today's lesson that I wanted to cover. Oops, I dropped the, the cap. <clears throat> um, what, what do you guys think would be the difference? Or if you know, what is the difference? And then we'll cover that. <laughs> I've, I've only danced uh, dances from our country, from Korea. So I've only danced Korean dances before. Yeah, you can say that, Johan. 
Brian Wessels. So that's if you're like, you're, you're a dancer, but you've only danced Korean dances before. You don't know any other country's dances. Then you can say, yeah, 우리나라 춤, 춤적 만 있어요. Yeah, but we're going to talk about that form also. That's also a slightly different form than what we just did. Because that doesn't use pull down it. I have done it versus I did it. Yeah, Amerilis, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> the one with Chuck is further in the past. Um, no, it doesn't have to do with how far, far in the past it is. I tried, did it, and saw how it went. Now that I did it, okay. A, have the experience of having tried, done it. Yes, Tessa S, that's correct. Tessa S, you got it perfectly. So... Um, because I already explained exactly what that form chuk means, that means an experience, you might be able to at least guess what the meaning of these two forms is, and you might already know it. But as a review, let's talk about a few things. So, first of all, when you use this chuk form, as I said before, chuk means an experience. If you're saying just poda, you're just talking about doing something. It's not necessarily an experience. You're not going to say you had the experience of just eating kimchi unless you wanted to say, I've had the experience of eating kimchi. Oops, let's say I just got a donation. Dank Fancy. Dank Fancy. That's an interesting name. We really appreciate you doing this in public chat. Thanks. Yeah, I really I appreciate you guys being here too. I would not keep doing the live streams if it was like 10 people showing up. <laughs> I'm really glad it's like consistently like 150 to 200 people each week. So yeah, thank you guys all for coming. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you have any friends, do share this live stream with them. The more the merrier. Uh, let me just do a small dab for you, Dank. Say thanks, let me just do a Dank dab. <laughs> thanks. I mean, Danks. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> so, if you were to say, a form with talk, you're actually talking about it was an experience. So you're not just going to say talk for everything that you do, everything that you try. You know, here, I tried eating kimchi yesterday. Like, that sounds really awkward. Like, I had the experience of eating kimchi yesterday. Um, I mean, I have the experience of trying kimchi yesterday. It sounds awkward. You would just say kimchi. I tried kimchi yesterday. That's the other point I wanted to bring up, is if you need to talk about when you did something, like I did it yesterday, I did it two weeks ago, you must use regular pulda. So once more, I'll say that again. If you need to say when that experience was, you don't do it with chok, you use it with pulda. So if you were to just say, 먹어본 적이 있어요, that just means I have done it before. I'm not going to tell you when, just I have that experience. That experience of having tried kimchi is, is inside of me. You wouldn't just say, yesterday that experience of trying kimchi is inside of me. Like the, it sounds awkward in English and it sounds, it makes no sense in Korean. So if you want to specify when something happened, you have to use pulldown. But if you want to specify that what you did was an actual sort of experience thing, like not just something you did, not just something you tried, but it was actually an experience, you know, like I have done it before. If you would say, I have ever done it before in English, then you could say chok in Korean. But we're not done. Another thing, just a reminder that poda is actually you're just doing something and trying to see how it goes. So if you just want to say you did something or you will do something or you do something and that's it, just use pulda. That's the simplest one. You don't need to use chok every time you want to say that you did something. It's not necessary. It's only specifically for something that you want to say you have ever done it before. And in English, we only say you have only, you've, I've ever done, I've like, I've gone there before. We only say that when we're talking about an experience. I've tried it before. You know, I've learned it before like that. It's an experience. So that's the difference. Another difference is you cannot make commands with the chuck form. You cannot make commands with this chuck form. So you cannot say, try it, <clears throat> go to Korea. You should have the experience of going to Korea. You cannot use this form with it. Oh, hold on, I got another donation. Whoa, Carrie Rich. Carrie Rich, you're gonna put, you're gonna put me and my kids all through college with your donations. <laughs> I'm not going to college, but if I keep getting your donations, I might go back to college. Carrie Rich, oops, I already, Spell it wrong. Read that. Oh, I don't need these parentheses. 
We just take up space. Carry. Carry Rich. Dang, with the twenty dollar donation. The biggest donation today. One oh, let's see what, what do you what do you request? One tiny dab, please. And thank you. Thank you. Thanks for teaching us, Bill. Okay, a tiny dab. Tiny dabs are the hardest, you know. Tiny dabs are the hardest to do. <clears throat> Thank you, Carrie Rich. Really appreciate it. A huge donation for a very tiny dab. So if you're giving someone a command, you want to tell someone to try something, to do something, you know, go to Korea, ride an airplane. You can't, you cannot say something like piengiter tabonjok haseyo or anything like that. You have to use taboseyo. Ride, try riding in an airplane, try flying an airplane. Ka boseyo, try going to Korea. Or you know, ka pa, bogo pa, bogo payo, try it. So if you want to use a command, you have to use boda. Um, a few other things. Also, if you want to say that you are doing something, so this is, I'll just write past, this is only for past tense. If you want to say that you do, like you have ever done something and you do something currently, or you will have the experience of doing something, you cannot use this form. This form is only to say that you have done it before. It is in the past. It already happened and I have that experience. Isoyo, I have that experience. Or opsoyo, I don't have that experience. You cannot say I will have that experience or I had had that experience with chog. You have to use, in that case, boda. Boda you can use any tense because it's just a regular verb. Um, you could even say currently am. You can even use progressive ten progressive tense. Bogo, pogo, isoyo. I am currently trying to eat kimchi and seeing how it is. You know, you've got your mouth stuffed with kimchi and your friend says, hey, have you ever tried kimchi before? Kimchi ru bogo bun jogi isoyo. You could say, ah, chigum bogo pogo isoyo. I am trying it right now, right? You can use any tense. Or you say, oje, yesterday, oje, bogo pasoyo. I tried it yesterday. Or I will try it tomorrow. 내일, tomorrow, 내일, 보고, 볼 거예요, 볼 거예요. Future tense, any tense you want, pull that. However, chalk is only past, it already happened. You know, you're, you're talking about the past whenever you're using chalk because it's an experience that has happened. Um, so yeah, if you want to say that you have just tried doing something, you just did something, just use pull that. So let's give you one more example sentence. Well, two more example sentences actually. So to America, Kabon, Toki, Isoyo, versus, versus, Yiguge, Ka, Pasoyo. Yiguge, Kabon, Jogi, Isoyo. I have been to America before. Yiguge, Kabasoyo. I went to America. So these both mean I've been to America, right? So some people might think, oh, well, what's the difference? Aren't they like in this situation, these two forms are pretty similar, right? Like I have been to America, I have been to America. Yes, they're in this case, in some cases when you use either or, you can get a similar sort of meaning, but they're different in actually the, nu the nuance is actually different. This one means I have been to America before. I have the experience of having tried or just going, having gone to America. This one simply means I just went to America to see how it was. Maybe you just went to America once. I went to America just once, you know, I just went there. This means I was actually an experience. So going to America was an experience and I have that experience. So that's the difference. If you want to say like, I have been to America before, Use this chuck form. If you just want to say, I went to America, that's it. Just, I went there. Like, oh, did you go to America? Yeah, I did. Kabasoyo. Okay. Kabasoyo. If you want to say, have you, have, have you been to America? Yes, I have been there before. Kabonjogi soyo. I have been there before. So that before word is often a good way to translate it. Although, like I said, in Korean, there is no word before. This before often conveys a similar meaning in English when you translate it. So that's kind of one thing to think about if you're kind of confused if I should use like 
chok, chok, or if I should just say poda in it by itself, do I want to say before in English or not? If I want to say before in English, if I could say before, use this. If you can't say before, use this. That's an easy way. That's my special Billy trick for how you can tell the difference between this form and the other one when you're making it. You know, if you're listening to someone tell it to you, you don't have to worry about that. But if you're trying to make your own sentences, that's just a quick trick. Okay, let's check the chat for a moment. Came, saw, bought the t-shirt. Yeah, I actually have some uh, t-shirt designs that I made, or not just t-shirts, but like some pillows, some other random things. I just don't, I don't sell them on my channel yet because I'm worried it'll look too much like I'm just advertising to buy stuff. Like it's, it's not really like a business venture. It's like it's done through a company that YouTube has a sponsorship with. And uh, if people buy the t-shirts, I think I would get like $2 or $3 per $20 t-shirt or something like that. So I haven't activated yet. So there is no Billy merchandise yet. <laughs> but if a, bunch, if a bunch of people request it, I could activate it, but it's really not something for me to make money. It's just, if people really wanted t-shirts and stuff, there is a way that I can sell it directly through the YouTube channel. Like it would show the pictures right below my videos. Maybe you've seen other people have that. So that is the option. But I do have some Billy merchandise. I just haven't started selling any of it, any of it yet. Is this okay? Kim Shiro Bowenjok Pakke Opsoyo. Um literally, flying Icarus, literally it means I have only tried eating kimchi before. Um in a certain context, Kim Shiro Bowenjok Pakke Bowenjok Pakke Opsoyo. It sounds a little awkward to me. I can't think of when it would be natural to use it. Kim Shiro Bowenjok Pakke Opsoyo. Yeah, like, I guess, I'm not really sure when you would want to say I only have the experience of having eaten kimchi before. You'd, you'd, you'd probably just want to say, I have only tried kimchi. So, kimchi pake an bogo pasoyo. Because you don't really need to say before. Like, I've only eaten kimchi before. You can just say, I've only had kimchi. I've only tried kimchi, right? You don't need to say, I've only tried kimchi before. It's not really necessary, I think. Um... I wouldn't go adding a bunch of other particles on the to chok just because it's not that common. But if you were to say that in the right context, grammatically, you'd be okay. Yeah, the fan club is basically the Discord. And there is a fan Instagram. I think it's uh, Go Billy Korean Fans. I think it's the Instagram name. And uh, there's some funny videos that Ahimong has edited on there, I think. Um, okay, so... We are not done though today. So we are finished with the bulk of today's lesson. Now, I wanted to go a little bit more and I have some advanced notes. So we're gonna talk about a little bit more about what today's lesson was. So if you are here as a beginner, so if you're just here as a beginner, you're done. Today's lesson is over, congratulations. You now know how to say have ever or have just done something before. So. You're good. If you're an intermediate and you want a little bit more, stay with me. I can probably do another 20 minutes of lesson and then we're going to be done. So we're going to be finished early today. Yes. So I can go back and finish my vacation on this cruise boat. So um, I do want to talk about one more thing and that is this word talk. So I told you that this word means an experience. Well, if you search this word in a Korean dictionary, you'll find two definitions, actually. You'll find two definitions. The first is 경험, as we talked about, which means an experience. Now, as I said, this doesn't really, is, this is not the word you would use to say you have an experience of something, but it is a literal word that means an experience. Another definition you'll find for this word is, now what is, Day, day, day is the word that we use in the form when you say if and when, which I believe we just did last week. I think that was last week's or was it the week before? Yeah, I think last week. So this means when as in the time. Day means time. Now this is not, this word is not used on its own. So if you wanted to say like, oh, I have time, you would not say day, day ga isoyo. Day, if you use, actually, I can tell you a funny story about that. Okay, so first of all, you would not say this if you want to say you have time. This is just used like when you do something, as in literally the time that something happens. So the time that something happens. So this word can mean both 
the time that something happens, and an experience. I will tell you though, there's, there's another word that sounds exactly like de, that's not time. That means dead skin cells. And uh, if you were to say de ga isoyo, thinking it means I have time, what you're really saying is I have lots of like dead skin cells and they would probably ask if you want to go to the sauna and get them like rubbed off at like the massage tray or something like that. So yeah, be careful if you're using te. Don't use it by itself. It's only used as part of grammar form. But if you just randomly use te, that's what it means. Okay. So talk means an experience, but it also can mean a time. So if you're saying, Hey, bon jogi. What you're literally saying is, you know, I have the experience of having tried doing something. But what you're also literally saying is, there is in a time of having done something before in the past. There was a time when I did that in the past. You don't have to think of it like this though, because it makes much more sense if you just think of it as meaning experience. It's easier to understand. But literally talk also means time, as in the time when something happens. So if this means te, that means there must be another grammar form, you know, harte, when I do something, that uses talk instead of te. And there is, but it's, a, and it's an advanced grammar form. So we're going to go over that. It's not, it's advanced as in you don't need it until you're advanced, but it's not advanced as in difficulty. You can understand this form probably as a beginner. So instead of te, you simply say chok. You remember this form we used? We used this before when you want to say when something happens, as in literally the time when something happens. This is an older form of Korean. This is an older sounding Korean grammar form. It's an older sounding way of saying time when something happens. And you'll still hear it in Korean sometimes by, you know, people who are a little bit older, maybe in their 50s or so. And you might also see it in writing. You might see it in books or novels if the character's a bit older. You might see it on TV. It's not that old sounding, but it's an older style version of it. And it means the same thing as the time when something happened. So if you were to say something like, uh, like mogerte, normally that would be when you eat, you know, we use it attached the same way as you do when making the regular day form. So it's a li after a vowel or e after a consonant. It's the exact same way plus te. Instead, now you just switch this to mogu chok. And you have the exact same literal meaning. But this is an older sounding form and it's not used in place of te that much. It doesn't mean that, I'm not saying that older people will just switch te and say chok every time. No, it's just used in some verbs will prefer to use chok over others. And that's an older sounding form though. So let me give you an example of that. So if you ever see chok used in the same way, like after a verb stem, and then you see something like, you know, uh, or lir if it ends in a vowel, so if you ever see verb stem in this and then afterward you see chuck, just know it means time. So here's an example sentence of it. It means the same thing as if it said te. But you might see this, you might see this sometimes. So an example would be a. Ah, nega, so I, me, nega. Orida means to be young. Orida. Orida means to be young, as in like youthful young. Not like I am 60, but I wish I was younger, like 30. That's not the type of young this means. This means youthful, like a child, childlike youngness. So if you were to say, nega oril chok, literally means the time, the time when I am young. Or in, in English, we would say, back when I was young, right? Now, if you were to say back when I was young, it doesn't sound that old fashioned. Like I could say back when I was young if I want, but I could also just say when I was a kid, right? And both of those are legitimate. They mean the same thing. It's kind of like that. If you say, old, if you use chok, it kind of has that slightly older fashion style way of saying back when, you know, back, back in the day 
When I was a kid, you know, like that. So, 내가 어릴 적 친구 친구야. You know, whatever. 내가 어릴 적 친구야. So, it's a friend. So, maybe you're pointing at someone. And they say, oh, who is that? And you're like, oh, 내가 어릴 적 친구야. That's my friend. The time when I was young. That's my friend from when I was young. 내가 어릴 적 친구야. Or maybe they'll say, 내가 어릴 적 and then they'll talk about when they were young. When they got older, okay? Blah 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 blah. You know, ice cream was five cents a gallon, and gosh, well, they paid us to take it. You know, they'll have some sort of story like that, and that would be what you would use. So, older chuck is the same literal meaning as older day time. Older day, older chuck. So, you can use it as either, and you might see this. I don't recommend using chuck for this type of purpose, but it's so common that I think you should know how to recognize it and. If you're not an advanced speaker, I wouldn't worry about finding sentences that have this in it. But if you are, uh, or actually even using it if you're an advanced speaker, but at least be aware that this is sometimes used as well. And it has the same meaning. And we're not done though. Let me just check the chat for a moment. And while I'm checking, let me throw away this pen. Let's get a new one. Fortunately, this uh, fortunately this cruise boat has a lot of dry erase markers just lying around, so I got a new one right now. Okay, let's check the chat for a moment. Someone, someone talking about oatmeal in the chat. What's going on? Let's see, T R. But wait, there's more. Oh, littering on the boat. No, no, no. Uh, it's a, the trash can. I threw it in the boat's trash can, I promise. I didn't just throw it off to the, in the ocean. I promise I didn't just throw it in the ocean. <laughs> Billy needs a sponsorship deal. Oh, yeah, with Expo. Yeah, if they want to sponsor these live streams and send me like boxes and boxes of um, markers, then I will, I'll, I'll do this. Like every time I switch markers, I'll be like, Go Billy prefers. Expo markers, the finest choice in whiteboard writing. Now I'll do that every single time if they sponsor me. Okay. Oh, me, me. Oh, me, me. I've never seen your uh, name before. A new donor. Nice. Me, me. Me, me. More like you, you. Am I right? Thank you for the $10 donation. I got to do a dab too. Unless me, me, he or she, unless they say otherwise. Okay, here we go. So, you know, on the boat, it's not, or on the boat, so I got to do like some Pilates to get warmed up because that's what they do. I think this is, I think this is Pilates, right? <laughs> Thank you, Mimi. Not sponsored by Expo currently. Yeah, I'm not sponsored by Expo, but I wish I was sponsored by them because I use so many markers. I don't know, maybe it's like an anti-sponsorship for Expo because these markers die in like three days of use. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the, they don't last that long, but maybe it's just the ones that I got. Anyway, they work well for like one or two times. Um, okay, so let's go on. So we got my new marker here. Um, one more thing that I've gotten people asking me about is what's the difference between just saying? So we're going to take the verb hada. Han, oops. Han, togi, soyo. And hey, pun. So what is this? What did I just write down on the board? Because you said, Billy, but you said we have to add poda, and it becomes pun, right? Like trying doing something. But what's this, Billy? Han, han. I'm pretty sure that's just the past tense negative. I'm sorry, past tense uh, adjective form of an action verb, right? This was during my lesson when I talked about how to change an action verb into an adjective. So if you are not an intermediate speaker or if you don't know about that lesson, don't worry about this. But I'm going to let you know there is one more form that uses chuck, and that is using chuck just with the verb in the past tense adjective form by itself without poda. So this is the exact same form but without poda. 
What could be the difference between saying 해본 적이 있어요? You know, or maybe with 가다, to go. 간 적이 있어요, or any other verb. 먹다, to eat. 먹은 적이 있어요. What would be the difference between saying that and then using it with 보다? So what's the difference between using 보다 and not using 보다? What do you guys think? And then I'll tell you what the answer is in just a moment. But I, I'm always curious what you guys think first. 본 is optional? No, 본 is not optional. This is a different meaning. You cannot just remove 본 or else you'll have to make sure you change the grammar form. But you might see this form used without 본 instead just using the verb itself in the past tense adjective form. So this is not 해 적 있어요. It's 해본 적 있어요. And this is not, this also is not 해 적 있어요. This is 한 from 하다. 한 적 있어요. So this has to be the past tense adjective form of the action verb that you have up here. It's not just saying that pon is optional because pon is not optional. It changes the meaning. But what do you guys think is the difference? Flying Icarus. Yes, you got it. Flying TR. Maybe try another brand like Sharpie. That's a good, that's a good one. I'll just use Sharpies on my whiteboard. <laughs> Pretty sure they're permanent. Yes, flying Icarus. Experience of trying something versus just experience of doing something. Yes, Ibrahim, you just have the experience and you weren't, you did, it's not something you tried out. It's not something that you were trying. Abby, yes, to just do something. Noah Deeps, experience versus having had done it. Yes, the first is just you just did it and the second one is you tried it. Now, this is the exact same difference as between just saying Hesoyo, I did it versus he pasoyo. Now, I did a live stream already about the difference between this as well, so I'm not going to do it again. But basically, really quickly, it's just this is just doing something. I just did it. Hesoyo, you know, kasoyo, I went. Bogosoyo, I ate it. Or he pasoyo, yeah, I tried it. Bogo pasoyo, I tried eating it. Kabasoyo, I tried going there. Yes, it's the exact same difference. As in, literally, it's pretty much the same thing. You can say 한적 있어요, 간적 있어요, or you can say 해본적 있어요, 가본적 있어요. And literally, you're, you're getting a very similar meaning. It's not that big of a difference. If you were to say, I have done it, or I have tried doing it. However, so that's the first thing I just want to say is, you can use either one. And sometimes you'll see people just say 간적 있어요, 한국에 to Korea, 간 Gone, 저기 있어요. I have the experience of having gone to Korea. And that's okay. But it's less common to just say that you did something when you are talking about an experience. Because when you're talking about an experience, most of the time you're going to say that you tried out doing something because it was an experience. I tried it out. Most of the time, 적 goes together with 보다. So you'll see 본, bobo something, something, 본, 적, way more often than you'll just see the verb 적. But either of them are okay. You could just say, like, I have lived in Korea before. 한국에, in Korea, 산, lived, 저기, soyo. I have lived in Korea before. Okay, I have the experience of having lived in Korea before. That's the it. That's, that's it. 한국에 살아본. Living, tried it. I tried living in Korea before. Yeah, I've tried living in Korea before. Yeah, I've lived in Korea before. Yeah, I tried it out. That's the difference. You can use either one, but more often the polda form will be preferred because you're talking about the experience of having done something. And when you're talking about having tried something out, it was an experience. Most of the time you'll tend to use the polda trying form. So that's the difference, but you can see either one. So, that is the end of today's live stream. It was short. This is the shortest live stream to ever exist out of all my live streams. We finished in just under an hour and a half. Well, I'd say just an hour and a half for today. So it's like 20 minutes shorter than normal. Um, so I'm going to answer questions just for, just until 3.35, so just for 10 minutes. I'll take questions and then I'll stop the stream. Because I don't want to just drag it out too long. Oh, and one more thing. So, before I finish. 
So all of these outlines, so this the outline for today, as well as the outline for every single live stream is available on my Patreon page. And that's for everyone for $1 and up. So everyone who's a $1 donor on Patreon gets access to every single one of these live streams from past and future live streams. Uh, oh, I just got a donation. Let's check that out. Zcadman, Zcadman. Zcadman. Are you supposed to be like Zcadman? I'm Zcadman. Swap there. Oh, I Zcadman. I actually have a lesson about how to say thank you for, but you can just say if you. The simple way is you can just say the noun, follow like swap, and then just say kamsamnida. Swap kamsamnida is okay, but there's other ways to say it, and I have a live stream about that. Kamsamnida chodor mani tuwase. Okay, so you you've helped me a lot. I see what you're trying to say. Told me, oh, here, I'll just tell you how to do that. So if you want to say something that was very helpful, you can say, you're literally saying help. So toum means, it's a noun that means help. Tomi mani pesoyo. Literally what you're saying is, if you remove the mani for a second, help became, or what you're saying is, it became help. So what you did became help for me. So tomi pesoyo, that means it was helpful. Tomi mani tesoyo. It was helpful a lot. Or in English, we would say that was very helpful. Tomi mani tesoyo. This is just a, an expression you can just memorize. Or if you want to learn it as tomi mani tueda, tomi tueda, to become help, you can memorize it like that. So tomi mani tesoyo. It was very helpful. Thank you, Zcatman, your donation as well. Tomi mani tesoyo. Your donation also was very helpful. And I'll do another dab for you as well. Thank you, Zcat man. Oh, I just got another one. Sam Strongarm. Now that's a name I haven't seen in about a week. <laughs> Sam Strongarm. I swear, your name's always gonna be Sam Strongbad to me. Awesome, thank you. Billy, hey Billy, I missed a few lessons recently, but thank you for today's. Yeah, thanks for coming, Sam. I really always appreciate it. Billy Shizu told me Mani Tesoyo. Oh, thanks, Tiffany Kipo. Oh uh, yeah, so th Sam Strongarm as well. So I'm gonna give you a strong arm, a strong arm dab for that. Thank you, Sam Strongarm. Okay, so every outline is on Patreon for everyone on there. And also, if you want updates about future live streams, come to the Discord. It's always active. We've got well, it's getting it's always getting more active. You know, some days are not as active. Um, and we hang out there. I'm there a lot of the time. Um, we share secrets in there. We share live stream updates. Uh, people give me ideas for where I should take the live stream, what we should do for topics, for voting, and everything like that goes on the live stream. So if you're not already in the, I mean, it goes on in the Discord. So if you're not already in the Discord, check it out. It's completely free. It's just a chat room. And let's see. <laughs> no dab for me, please. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Stan, my strong arm. I'll take it back. I'll take back the dab. I apologize for that. Let me take back the dab. Okay, I took I took it back. It's been reversed and canceled. So yes, make sure to check that out. And um, yes, so let me just take, uh, I'll take questions just for another five minutes and then we'll stop. Yeah, the Discord is pretty cool. Um, and then also there's only two more, two more live streams until the end. There's only two more live streams before the end of season two. So right now we are in season two, which is much more prepared and smooth than season one, which had lots of, you know, the internet cut out, YouTube cut out, uh, stream didn't work, sound didn't work, you know, all these issues that's been fixed all from season one and season two has been much better. So this is the end of season two, this next Sunday and the next Sunday and that's it. And then there's going to be a break for three months or so while I'm in Korea. And then uh, there will still be some like regular live streams, but there won't be any more of these classroom live streams while I'm in Korea. So only two more. When is it coming back? I don't know when. Um, sometime in July at the earliest, because I'm going to be gone until the end of June. So I guess the earliest would be July. Um, let's see. But there will still be the, the abridged classes. So while I'm gone, I'll still upload the abridged classes every single week. Hmm. My neck feel, felt like it wanted to be cracked, but it didn't. 
Uh, every week you'll still get to see the live abridged or every other week. So you can watch those abridged lessons during the break. So that way you won't have to like, if you want to get a review on stuff we did. And then season three, if you guys have requests for season three, tell me in the Discord. Go, join, the, uh, join the live stream chat and tell me what you guys want for season three. If you can imagine anything for season three, what would you want? You know, season one and season two are slightly different. Season one was like all beginning stuff and season two is mostly like low intermediate, high beginner, low intermediate. Uh, what would you want for season three? Do you want more intermediate stuff as well? Or do you want more of a mix? Or do you want different format or different styles or uh, anything? Just let me know and I'll try to consider it for season three. Do you have any on-site classes in LA? Nope. I've never done an on-site class except for uh, teaching my little brother, which I did in that video recently. And I did that again last, uh, yesterday actually, I had my younger brother again and we filmed another episode where I taught him some more Korean. And I'll do that again on Saturday. And uh, yeah. Have you done a stream on that? Yes, I did, Noah Deeps. I have a stream on that in the nominalization stream. I cover that form as well as the many ways that it's used. Tiffany K-pop. I could do high, interme high intermediate and advanced. Um, I don't know if many people would come to the live streams if I did them in advanced level because I did the live stream about, if you remember, I did the live stream about Nun Ji and all those G forms, you remember? And that went into advanced territory. By the time I was entering the advanced parts, half of you guys had left. It was like, it dropped down from 200 to like 120 by the time I reached there. So. I'm not sure if there's a lot of people that, that want to learn more advanced stuff. I am certainly able to and willing to teach you guys advanced material if you want. It's just less people want to learn that. But you know, I'm open. If a season, if that's what you guys want for season three, we can do that. Wasn't that on Super Bowl day? Oh yeah, yeah, but this was before, before the Super Bowl though, it also uh, went down. <laughs> I was thinking that, but, I, and then I also finished that day, I thought, like right before the Super Bowl really started. There are always more beginners than advanced. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I can't only do a beginning lessons because yeah, that's not fun either. If you reach the level when you're in K Yeah, that would be low intermediate, Ibrahim. Low intermediate or high beginner at the lowest. So high intermediate to low beginner, I would say. Depending on how well you learn those concepts. If you really know them really well, then maybe low beginner. If you're still learning them, then maybe high, I mean, sorry, if you already know them, then low intermediate. If you're just learning them, then high beginner at the most. All right, anyway, it is now 3.33 o'clock. So thank you all for coming. Remember, check out the Discord for more information about this, su this Sunday. We only have two more, two more live streams and then we're done. Let's do another shout out to my donors for today. Thank you again, Lin B, Tater Tot, Dank Fancy, Carrie Rich, Mimi, Z Catman, and Sam Strongarm for your support for today. Um, you guys always make sure I have plenty of uh, money to buy all of these markers. I seriously use a new marker and a new eraser like every single live stream. And uh, thanks, I really appreciate it. Take care, guys. I'll see you again next time. Krom, Tommy, Doba. Uh, let's get this, um, the sun's still out. I think I still have some more time to relax here on the beach. Ugh. There's supposed to be a, an excursion to the shore a little bit later, so I'll probably uh, check that out too. Catch you later, guys. Whoa. Thank you.